Phlegmatics are known for their easygoing, kind, patient, and gentle nature. They typically approach sex with this same gentle and considerate attitude. A phlegmatic is that type of guy that when he's doing the do with his wife, tends to look at her face and the moment he feels like she's feeling any sort of discomfort, he's going to begin to ask her things like, baby, are you okay? Are you this? Are you? Because he's very, very gentle. He's so considerate to a fault. <laughs> and trust me, when it comes to that bedroom activity, you know the other room. <laughs> Some women don't like it when you're so gentle. And it's a just... <laughs> is a secret some women don't actually like it when you're so passive so gentle they just want you to take the lead okay this is not an attack on the phlegmatic temperament or anything remember we're looking at this subject so that we can get better at everything we do i mean so that we can achieve personal development right you cannot talk about personal growth without knowing your temperament and having the ability to understand the people that surround you Knowing your temperament and understanding people is a step towards achieving personal development. And today in this video, we're focusing on the phlegmatics, their characteristics and how they behave towards sex. You're welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Brazil. If you're liking this video already, which I know you do, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe before you forget. All right, so let's continue. So the phlegmatics are easygoing people. They are very gentle. They are passive. They are not confrontational. A phlegmatic man is that type that would stay in a marriage relationship. Even though he's not serving him, even though he doesn't find fulfillment in that relationship, he might remain there because what are people going to say? I don't want to make it seem like I'm troublesome, like I can't handle my family, you know? A phlegmatic woman is that type of woman that will stay and remain in an abusive relationship because she's been so obedient, so loyal, so loyal to a fault, even to an abusive man. And these things they do, not because they really want to do these things, but because these are traits that are inborn. These are weaknesses. Being passive is a weakness. I mean, when you don't like something, or oh God, I don't like this thing. Don't do it again. Say it and be free. Remember, the truth shall set you free. You cannot be like, that. they do trouble. I don't just want wala. I don't want me to hear my voice. And they carry the same attitude to the other room. <laughs> A phlegmatic wife would never say no to her husband. He wants it any day, anytime, under the rain, whatever condition, she cannot say no to her husband, which is a good thing. I mean, most of the very submissive wives we know today are phlegmatics. It comes naturally to them. They don't have a problem being submissive. In fact, that portion of the Bible that says wife submit to your husband is not for the phlegmatic wife. Already, originally, now so she be, she will submit. You understand? But then, sometimes it becomes a challenge because if you no want to do something, my sister, you don't have to do it. If you no want to do something, my brother, you don't have to say yes. Sometimes, to say no, no, the by person, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt to say no sometimes. You don't have to say yes all the time, even when it's not convenient for you. Sometimes you have to put yourself first. It's not a bad thing. Most often than not, a phlegmatic would not initiate sex. Even a phlegmatic man, he might not initiate it. Maybe so you don't want to. <laughs> Maybe say continue lamo, but he might not bring himself to initiate sex. And imagine when a man is phlegmatic and is married to a phlegmatic woman. The few days that I was one year, nothing that happened. No? <laughs> he would want something and he can never say it. They are passive. Okay, so when a phlegmatic is able to conquer that passiveness in him, then he becomes more confident. He becomes more bold. Not to make demands, not to try and control people, but to, you know, sometimes say what he wants. Sometimes put his needs first. All right. Like I said, when it comes to initiating sex, a phlegmatic might always be withdrawn. But when it is initiated, they cannot say no. Remember, they are loyal, they are gentle, they are obedient. They are very, very good followers. Very, very, very good followers. They can work in a firm for 40 years. In fact, they can work in a firm and retire in that firm without working any other place. When it comes to phlegmatic wives, 
I don't personally think they would have any problem in their marriage. In fact, they can stay with an abusive man. All right, that is not a good thing, but I'm just trying to let you know how they behave, especially towards sex. They usually don't have any problem. But when it comes to a phlegmatic man, that is where I think there is a problem, especially if he's not able to work on his weaknesses. Because a phlegmatic man will not always want to initiate sex. And the fact that your wife is not initiating sex does not mean that she doesn't need it. The fact that your wife is not saying, okay, do it like this for me, do it like this, okay, I like it that way, does not mean that she doesn't like variety or she doesn't like, you know, to change style sometimes and to, you know, have some level of adventure. A phlegmatic man would tend to do the same thing year in, year out, year in, year out, and sometimes it can be tiring for their wives. God says in the Bible, for I have not given you the spirit of fear, but of boldness. Boldness to be able to state what you want. Boldness to be able to be assertive sometimes. Being assertive is not always bad. Boldness to be able to do what you want, not be a people pleaser. Not say yes, even when you want to say no. Not because you know that saying yes is going to be at the detriment of your own happiness or the well-being of your family. That is why at this point I'm going to say that all temperament, including the phlegmatics, they need the Holy Spirit to be able to conquer our weaknesses. I need the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit. In fact, there is nothing more blessed in this life than having the Spirit of God. <laughs> Because the Bible says that the Comforter will teach you all things, will bring all things to your remembrance, teach you all things. The Comforter is going to teach you how to become more bold, how to become more assertive, how to say no sometimes, how to check your excesses. The Comforter is going to help you and teach you. Everybody needs the Spirit of God in him. And the way through which you can get the Spirit of God is to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior first, before you can now ask for the Spirit of the Lord to dwell and live in you. Because if you not repent, you're not born again, my brother, how the Spirit of God wants to enter you now? In John chapter 14, verse 26, the Bible says that, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Everybody needs a comforter. The comforter is the Holy Spirit. He's going to teach you all things. That word teach encompasses everything. He's going to teach you how to handle your emotion for the cholerics, for the phlegmatics, for the sanguine, for the phlegmatic. He's going to teach you how to put your exercise under check. How not to be so passive. How not to say yes every time, even when you have to say no. Teach you boldness. How to attack everything in life with boldness. Because even God says that you don't have to be afraid. Because our God is not a God that is afraid and always fidgeting. No. This doesn't mean you have to be controlling or the took hand inside people. I know, far from it. But you know, some level of boldness, some level of being self-assured, Approaching things with confidence is very necessary to have a happy life. Nobody is as successful, peaceful, loving, even healthy as a man who has been able to conquer his weaknesses. Thank you so much for watching this video. This is where we end this temperament series. If you've been following so far, please do well to let me know in the comment section what you think about this topic. I would really love to read from you. Do well to like this video. Subscribe if you have not done so yet. If you've not seen the other videos in this series, you can check this out. This is how the cholerics behave towards sex. And feel free to look around the channel. Your suggestions are highly welcome. Your opinion is valid. Thank you so much once more. Stay blessed and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.